All right, let's talk about kidney anatomy and answer the questions. What are the functions, topography, and parts of the kidney? What is the importance of the renal cortex and medulla? And what's the sympathetic innervation of the kidneys? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So these are the different things we'll talk about, and let's start with functions. So the kidney filters blood. Uh, so if this is the abdominal aorta, 20% of all the cardiac output goes to the kidneys via the renal artery. And so the renal artery distributes blood uh, through different branches, and then there's these structures called the nephrons that filter the blood. Um, but then the kidneys reabsorb the majority of that filtrate, the water, the salts, the glucose, and nutrients, right back in the bloodstream. So after those nephrons have filtered the blood, all the, the, the filtrate goes right back in the renal veins and then dumps right back into the bloodstream of the inferior vena cava. And so then the kidneys excrete the remaining 1% of water, urea, salts, uh, as urine. So the nephrons filter. And so the remaining 1% that does not go back in the bloodstream is secreted at the ureter as urine. So let's do that again. Put those three things together. There's the nephron. That's the functional unit of the urinary system. This is where all the rubber hits the road. Um, so if your kidneys filter 180 liters of of blood a day. that It actually gets 10 times that amount, but that's how much these, these nephrons filter. And of that 180 liters, nine, uh, liters, 99% is reabsorbed and enters right back into the bloodstream. And 1% of that is excreted as urine. So what in the, what, why have this seemingly inefficient uh, system going and it's not inefficient is the most brilliant thing. By sampling that much blood, and you only excrete that much, the kidneys are able to do the following. You regulate blood pressure by controlling water and salt. Uh, it also helps to regulate pH by secreting hydrogen or reabsorbing uh, bicarbonate. It also uh, has this endocrine function, which is the RAS system, renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system to maintain mean arterial pressure, or secreting erythropoietin to help produce red blood cells and also produces the active vitamin D. So these are all the functions of the kidney. And so I once had a, a nephrologist say that people who say that all the kidneys do is excrete uh, urea um, and urine, it's like saying the only function of a car is to make exhaust. Yes, that's a function, but the car does so much more and the kidneys do so much more as well. Now, the topography of the kidneys. Kidneys weigh about 150 grams and, are the, grams and are about the size of a clenched fist. And the right kidney is slightly lower than the left kidney due to the liver. So there's our right and left kidneys. And the liver in the upper right quadrant pushes that right kidney down. So the inferior pole of that right kidney is about a finger breadth above the iliac crest. Um, and the kidneys are located in the retroperitoneal space between the T12 and L3 vertebrae. In an axial section of the abdomen, we see um, there's the liver and stomach, stomach and spleen for uh, just orientation. In orange is the parietal peritoneum and in purple is the visceral peritoneum. Between the two is the peritoneal cavity filled with peritoneal fluid. And we call all of that the intraperitoneal space. So that means at the back, that's the retroperitoneal space where that prefix retro means towards the back. So all the organs behind the peritoneum are called retroperitoneal organs, which includes the right and left kidneys. And on top of those are the adrenal glands as well as the IVC and the aorta, all retroperitoneal. Now the renal cortex and medulla. Uh, before I get into that, let's talk about nephrons, that functional unit of the urinary system. There's about one to two million nephrons in each kidney. And here's a nephron. And it consists of the following parts. The renal corpuscle, which is the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule, the proximal convoluted tubule, where a lot of the reabsorption and secretion takes place, the loop of Henle, uh, the distal convoluted tubule, and the collecting ducts, which collect uh, dis uh, different distal convoluted tubules from nephrons and excretes the urine. So with that hit, uh, background, let's talk about the renal cortex, which is the outer portion of the kidney, everything you see there in red, which includes these renal columns that go between the renal pyramids. The renal cortex contains renal corpuscles, the proximal and distal tubules, and peritubular capillaries. It also receives 95% of all the blood supply that enters the kidneys go to the cortex. 
Now, the renal medulla is the inner portion of the kidney shown here in blue. And the renal medulla is comprised of these renal pyramids that have a base near the cortex and an apex that dumps into the minor calyx. And the, the renal medulla, these pyramids, only get 5% of the blood supply, which means if you have a drop in blood pressure or blood volume, these this element can have ischemic damage. Um, there are 8 to 12 renal pyramids in each kidney, and they contain the loops of Henle for juxtaglomerular nephrons as well as vasorecta and the collecting ducts for all nephrons. Uh, so those black stripes you see in the renal pyramid are collecting ducts and that sec- uh, excreting urine out into the minor calyx. So let's now see this nephron and superimpose it on there and you can see those collecting ducts excreting urine into the calyces. Now, the renal pyramids have this interstitial fluid concentration that increases from the base of 300 millilosmol all the way down to the apex of 1,200, like that. So, the base of the interstitial fluid is 300 millilosmol per kilogram, just like normal plasma, but as you descend down to the apex, it gets up to 1,200. This gradient of interstitial fluid concentration in the renal medullas uh, renal pyramids, it's helped main t- it helps maintain the salt and water balance and to concentrate the urine when necessary. And this gradient is established and maintained by something called the countercurrent exchanger or and, and countercurrent multiplier system. Now, why do we care about renal cortex and renal medulla? Well, there's these two classifications of nephrons. So um, to show that, here we have the, the separation of renal cortex and renal medulla. Let's do it again here, and we superimpose these nephrons. And so the cortical nephrons are found primarily in the renal cortex, and their loops of Henle sometimes dip their toes down into the medulla. But the juxtamedullary nephron, that prefix juxta means next to, so next to the medulla, these nephrons are right by that border, and they have these long loops of Henle that go into the medulla. So there's two classifications based upon where they're found. So the renal cortex has primarily cortical nephrons. That's like 85% of all those millions of nephrons, they're located in the cortex. Whereas the renal medulla has good ele- major elements of the juxtamedullary nephrons, but there's only 15% of those nephrons are called juxtamedullary with their loops of Henle that go down. But all the collecting ducts of all the nephrons are found in the renal medulla before they exit in, dump their uh, filtrate and urine into the minor calyx. So let's talk about major minor calyces and the renal pelvis. The renal, the renal calyces receive urine from collecting ducts. One minor calyx draining a renal pyramid, another minor calyx draining another renal pyramid, and those minor calyces come together to make a major calyx, and the major calyces come together to make the renal pelvis, and the renal pelvis funnels down as the ureter, draining urine down to the bladder. The hilum of the kidney is the entry-exit site on the medial region of each kidney, which consists of the renal vein, renal artery with lymphatics and sympathetics, and the renal pelvis. So here's the left kidney, and there's the renal hilum, which uh, then has the renal vein draining blood, the renal artery deep that's bringing blood to it, and the renal artery has around it those yellow sympathetics and lymphatics that are just not shown in this picture, as well as that renal pelvis. And let's conclude with sympathetic innervation. So uh, sympathetic innervation starts in the T10 to the L2 spinal cord levels in the lateral horn. They then exit via a splanchnic nerve, like lesser or least splanchnic, to go and synapse in a preaortic ganglion, like the celiac or aortic or renal. And then the renal plexus takes those sympathetics to the kidney. So here we have a cross section of the spinal cord with its associated anatomy, and a sympathetic neuron arises in the lateral horn and sends its axon through into the uh, sympathetic chain, but it does not synapse, and the least splanchnic nerve in this case will bring that preganglionic sympathetic neuron to um, a preaortic ganglion, like the aortic or renal, and then a postganglionic sympathetic neuron through the renal uh, plexus takes those sympathetics to the kidney, and then visceral sensory neurons go in the opposite direction back to the spinal cord. 
In this illustration, we can see the aorta and the renal artery, and so there's our lesser splanchnic nerve synapsing in the celiac and aortical renal ganglion, and then the sympathetics wrapping around the renal artery and entering the kidney, bringing sympathetics to different tissues, which causes vasoconstriction of intrarenal arteries, including all those arteries we see inside the kidney, but a special focus on afferent and efferent glomerular arterioles. If someone is actually uh, bleeding out, sympathetics can cause such a vasoconstriction that you shunt blood directly away from the kidney. Also, sympathetics innervate these juxtaglomerular cells, or JG cells, also known as granular cells, which secrete renin. So in green, there are those juxtaglomerular cells, juxta next to the glomerulus, and they have these beta-adrenergic receptors. So when the sympathetic nerves secrete norepinephrine and activate those beta-adrenergic receptors, these JG cells secrete renin, which then sets a chain of physiological events to maintain mean arterial pressure. This is part of the RAS system, which stands for renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And this is what then causes the production of angiotensin II, which then sets in all sorts of cool things of reabsorption of sodium and chloride, the production of aldosterone, and so forth. What about parasympathetic innervation of the kidney? Well, there is no parasympathetic innervation of the kidney, and if you do have some vagal fibers that go there, they're of clinical no significance. So that, my friends, is showing the kidney anatomy in a nutshell.